Good morning, Tyler. Welcome back. Good morning, John. I know you had a good trip to Toronto last week. Uh, unfortunately, Cam can't join us this morning for our update for October 18th. Our second last weekly update of the year. Can you believe the year has gone that quickly? Wow. Um, wow. It, it's just uh, amazing. But uh, we still got two more to do. We got one today. We got one next week. And then we go to our monthly uh, updates uh, in November, uh, where I'll be in a much warmer spot. I am telling you, I am freezing right now. Absolutely freezing. Anyway, Tyler, welcome back from the morning show. And uh, first thing I want to talk about, we had an event on Saturday, the Yacht Race. Have we got some winners? We do, John. The Yacht Race uh, was a lot of fun. We had 32 golfers, which means uh, which meant uh, 16 teams, 16 two-man teams participated. What's really unique about the Yacht Race is... Um, we do a, a blind draw in the morning prior to the event. So you don't know who your partner is going to be. Uh, so we had, we took all 32 golfers, split them into, into two pools based on handicap. And before the, before the, the event, we're pulling out in there. So, so no one knew who their partner was going to be. Um, we did a 10 a.m. shotgun and, and it went so well. The weather was perfect. The comments about the golf course were phenomenal. Uh, Joel and his team once again uh, provided a spectacular uh, venue for the event. Um, and we had two teams tie for first place. No, really? We did, uh, at 11 under par. So wow. two two-man teams tied at 11 under par. Um, so they split the winnings. Uh, those teams were Jeff Hall and Keith Ritchie. Wow. And uh, Bob Bonestiel and uh, Charles Medina. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Isn't that great? It, it was great. And you know what they loved? We did the live scoring on Golf Genius. So yeah. all the teams would see how everyone else was doing. And, and at the end of the day, uh, it was so much fun. Yeah. You know, it's too bad uh, we can't use that for men's league. We just have too many reports to do that mm -hmm. Golf Genius can't do. But the live scoring part is really great. Oh, for the single events, yeah. it's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, just a reminder. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, you'll probably get this video uh, maybe uh, a few hours before the event, but just a reminder if you do see it. That's right. Our, our AGM is tomorrow night, uh, Thursday night. The AGM will start at 7 p.m. Uh, registration will be open at 6.30. So for, for all the members who are coming in, um, all the voting members will be given a voting card. Um, so we are doing registration at 6.30. Right, and if you haven't caught it, uh, I did interview Tracy McNairn last week. Go look at that video. Uh, we do go over a lot of that package in the ATM and I think you'll find some things interesting. It's good to, to come to the meeting informed rather than not informed because you can, uh, you, you get a, a better realization of the issues and, and we're able to talk uh, with a bit more knowledge about them when you're here. So, we're rapidly coming to the end of the year, and uh, one thing we should mention, October 29th, services coming to an end. What does that mean? Right, so John, uh, it, it is that time of year. Um, although, you know, we look outside and a lot of the trees still have all their leaves, it's still very green out. Um, we are coming to the time of year where our, our services are going to be a little bit more limited now. So Sunday, October 29th, will be the, uh, the last day that we offer uh, full services. Um, so, so back shop and club cleaning, uh, driving range, um, and, and, and whatnot. Uh, starting Monday the 30th, um, the driving range will be closed. Uh, the side chipping green will be open. The putting green will still be open. And we are still allowing power carts. Uh, into November. Wow. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a change because in, in past years it was October 31st, everything is out and the course is closed and you could come, but you know, you just come and you played. Right. And now, now we'll, we're, we're going to continue as long as we can. That's right. Uh, and then uh, you, you'll actually be able to book tea times. It won't be a ballot, but they'll be booked tea times that, in November. That's right. We're going we're to open the tea sheet for, uh, for booking. So you won't, uh, for November, you won't be booking ballots. You can just book directly on the tea sheet. Uh, you know, it's to be expected. We'll probably have some frost delays and whatnot. So it won't be as busy, but we do plan on keeping the course open uh, into, into early November. Um, so, yeah, we're excited about that. Well, you know, speaking of frost delays, this is the longest I think I've ever seen without one. Yes. Um, 
usually we'll have two or three by this time of year. This is October 18th, mm -hmm. and we haven't had one yet, and it doesn't look like we're going to get one for the next few days. So we're, we've been pretty lucky in that regard. Mm -hmm. Okay, October 31st. I know Joel is looking forward to this day. This is his day because it's... Superintendent's <laughs> Revenge. <laughs> I know. Joel, if you're listening. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> Joel has been waiting for this day, I think, mm -hmm. since the day we opened in May. Yeah. Um, this is a lot of fun for Joel and his crew to uh, show, uh, you know, some nasty pin positions, some, some very interesting uh, spots. Uh, so it won't be just uh, 17 that has a tough pin. It'll oh. be, uh, I think it'll be 18 tough pins out there on that day. So a lot of fun to play. Well, I, I got to tell you a story about that. One men's league closing, we had a frost delay in the morning, so the greens were running really fast. And then we had a competition on 17, mm -hmm. where the longest first putt won a bottle of liquor. Oh. So my buddy at the time decides to put the pin right in the middle of the green. So we're playing around, we get to the 17th hole, and there's four foursomes on the tee. Oh, no. Four. Oh, no. Because nobody could sink the putt. The putt would go up, it would come back, it would go up, and come back. Now, as a convener, I ran up there and I said, guys, maximum two putts per hole and get out of here because we're, we're backed up solid. So, yeah, you can get some pretty nasty pin positions on 17. Like, Joel, come on, take it easy on us, will you? <laughs> You'll be hiding in the bushes laughing at everybody probably. So. Yeah, so listen, you came back from the buying show, a beautiful hotel room, by the way. Got a, Thank you. A, a nice, uh, nice room. Mm -hmm. uh, we never, uh, any conference I went there, we never had such a nice spot. But um, we, we talked to you about that and you were there. Um, is anything kind of that has hit you on the second day or uh, what should we be looking forward to uh, this coming year? Yeah, so John, the, the, the buying show was a lot of fun. Um, spent three, to three days total um, viewing all the products upcoming for next year. So, so day one, uh, when we did the video, I, I, I met with a lot of our clothing vendors. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was meeting with uh, uh, Bobby Jones, Sun Ice, um, I'm trying to think, uh, yeah. uh, all, all, all of those. And then day two is more of the hard goods manufacturers. Right. So I met with Ping, I met with Callaway, I met with uh, uh, TaylorMade. So I got a, a bit of a sneak peek at all the new lines for next oh, wow. year. Um, I, you know, uh, it's like being a kid in a candy shop because all you want to do is walk around, you want to touch and feel it all, you want to ask questions. So I am super stoked uh, to, 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 to show the members what we're going to have for next year. So we placed probably about, I'd say, 60% of our, our orders already at that buying show for next year. Right. So uh, I'm still in the process of placing a few more orders for accessories, uh, for a few extra clothing lines. Uh, but um, it was a very successful show. And you know what, the weather was great all week and, and, and the drive home afterwards was, was great. You know, the, the nice thing about the drive from Toronto to Ottawa this time of year, uh, it's super scenic, the leaves are changing and all that. So I always love that, that four hour drive. Yeah, it's great. And you have another little promotion for us called the Ball for Fall. Right, so you know what, uh, looking outside with, with all those leaves, falling uh, although we haven't had many leaves fall yeah. uh, but this is a time of year that we like to promote our our, our ball for fall um, so when we do have a lot of leaves on the ground you know some golfers don't want to be risking those those high premium balls those pro v ones or chrome softs uh, so we offer a great selection of ball uh, fall balls um, so my recommendations here would be the uh, callaway super soft or the callaway warbird uh, or the Titleist Velocity. These are uh, very good price point golf balls. You're not spending too much. I think you know the, the most expensive one is $38 a dozen. Uh, these are the ones where you know if you happen to lose them under a leaf, it's not not that bad. You know, like we we know we're gonna lose balls out here this time of year, so it's an inexpensive way to keep golfing with a good golf ball, and um, not be too worried if you lose one or two. Well, that's great, and uh, and it's very easy to lose. I think we, we went out yesterday, and we saw where the ball went. We could, we could see it. Yeah, yeah. We couldn't find it. No. Yeah. I mean, you just can't find it. So, yeah, you lose, and I'm not losing another good golf ball. No. And, um, yeah, that's uh, excellent. Okay, so last week uh, I did a, uh, an instructional series with Cameron, and we did the flop shot. You gotta watch this now.
Oh, I'm here with Cam on the 18th hole and we've got a tough situation here today. We are short-sighted. Uh, this happens a lot to me at Carlton because I'm pretty stupid sometimes. I hit into the green and instead of playing my miss to the long side, I'm on the short side. Did you go for the green and two again, John? Oh, I tried it. Tried, yeah, yeah, I came up a little short on that one. But uh, <laughs> we're now short-sighted. This happens a lot. I mean, it happens on number 11. We were there the a uh, few weeks back. This is a, a dastardly shot because if I just hit a normal chip shot, I'm probably going to end up over the green. Even if I put it on the green, it's still going to keep rolling and ball sloping away. Um, and the only shot I have is a flop shot. So today, you're going to take us through on how we do that. Are you ready for this? Let's do it. What club are you using for this shot? So we definitely want to always recommend lob wedge or sand wedge make sure you're using the wedge in your bag with the most loft on it. Okay, let, we're just gonna reposition the camera and then we'll, uh, Cam's gonna talk about setup for these things and then we'll talk about the different lies and throw, show you three different shots. We, we have three different lies for you here, but it's, before we do that, talk about how you would set up for a flop shot. Right, no, great, John. So these two balls here, fortunately we have an ability to play a shot high in the air. Um, we've got a great line. We've got a, a little bit thicker lie on a bit of an upslope. So we're going to decide, go ahead with the flop shot in these uh, cases because we're short-sided. Um, from a setup and ball position perspective, we want to play the ball forward in our stance. It's going to be close, uh, almost close to driver position. Feel free to have a nice wide stance. We want to have a bit of a descending blow with the club. We're going to open the club face prior to taking our grip. Very similar to a bunker shot that's going to ensure that we're adding a little bit of bounce because we want a significant portion of the sole of the club to be involved and have that glide through the rough with the shot. Okay, so um, you're going to go over, we'll, we'll do a couple of shots uh, from each one, a slow mo shot, and then one of the shots will have a, a full, full action and behind the line. So uh, you're going to go over like the different type of skill you required for each of these shots in terms of uh, what maybe a beginner golfer should be doing with it versus a maybe a more experienced golfer. Exactly, yeah. For some of our you know beginners, let's start with just opening the club face a fraction. Um, we're going to make a fairly large swing compared to some of your chipping motions with the actual swing method. And we're gonna really, we're gonna let our hands be active in the shot. We're gonna throw the club a little bit, right? We don't wanna have a ton of shaft lean. So we're going to let that club release and that's going to ensure that there's lots of loft on the club at impact and that'll pop the ball up in the air for you. Okay, I think, uh, I think we can do this. Okay, Ken. Okay. Ready to are hit you, one here, John? I'm ready. Okay, so this first lie is the probably the perfect lie for a flop shot in that it's just sitting up and there's grass underneath. It's sitting up. Is that correct? It's a, it's a pretty good lie. Yeah, it's yeah. not sitting up a mile. If it's sitting up really high, you have to be careful going yeah. under it, but this is a pretty solid lie. So you want to get your club underneath that? Exactly, okay. yeah. So we're gonna open the club face, similar to a bunker shot. My body's gonna align a little bit to the left, and I'm gonna to try to throw the club a little bit and make sure there's lots of loft at impact. It's gonna be a big swing here. Beautiful, beautiful. So now you've given yourself a chance and a putt on the green. Yeah, it wasn't too aggressive, right? Tried to hit it a little past the hole. It is a tough shot. Um, give a give ourselves a chance at, at par here. Okay. Let's do that again in slow motion. Yeah, now, okay, this particular lie here, this is kind of buried in the grass. Let me just, let me just uh, move the camera a bit, just so you can see. Uh, this is buried. Uh, Let's make sure it's real buried. John. Yeah. So, is it still possible to do this shot from that buried lie? I mean, it, it is. We've got some, some grass here. We can still open the club face. Um, it's not fully, fully buried. Uh, because it's a thicker lie, we're going to need a little bit more club head speed. And uh, I'd recommend aiming to a little bit of a fatter chunk of the green here, being a little bit less aggressive. Just left of the pin, we have a little bit more green to run out. 
um, that would be a good place to aim. And I'm going to try to create a little bit more club head speed. Go through it, my friend. So a little left of the hole, a little bit bigger swing. And you could see there where a great result, but it didn't quite carry as far as the last couple. Um, so that was kind of the minimum club head speed I needed. Even a few more miles an hour would have been great. I'd be happy with that shot. <laughs> right, we're going to do it in slow mo now. Okay, Cam, this is the situation I find myself a lot in Florida and sometimes here. The ball has no grass underneath. It is tight. Florida, often like this, there's no way I'm going to try and flop that one because I know what's going to happen. I'm going to drop kick that front edge into the ball and it's going to go five miles. What's your recommendation for this type of shot? Yeah, I would uh, certainly, you can carefully address the ball and make that decision, John, as to what type of shot you want to play. I mean, a very high level experienced golfer could just probably barely try to flop this one. For for majority of our membership, I would play this now with a square club face and play a pitch shot to the fat side of the green, not try to flop this one. The risk is that the club will bounce off the ground into the ball and skull it over if we try to flop that. So yep. um, I try to square it up and play it to the fat side of the green. Okay. Okay, let's do that again. That's about as perfect as you're going to get. That's almost as good as your flops. That's actually better than some of your flops. That is really good. So you were able to lightly hit that ball onto the green and, and keep it there. That's really good. Yeah, it's going to come out a little lower, though. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. okay. That's okay. Down the line was okay. You've got it done video. Okay, let's do this. Pam, thank you very much today. That, the three different types of scenarios, short-sighted yourself. Of course, the best thing to do is not get yourself in these positions in the first place. When you're approaching the green and you see a short-sighted pin, if you're going to make a mistake, try to make a mistake to the other side. <laughs> I think that's how pro golfers would put You don't want to be in this situation. But if you are, thank you very much for showing us how to get out of it. Thanks, Sean. That was great. All right. Wonderful. I mean, I, like I, I was out there with Cameron and, and uh, we didn't have to do, we, I think he mishit one shot on one of the thin lies, which shows you how dangerous mm -hmm. those lies can be on the short pin side. And, uh, but I mean, the, the last shot he hit with, uh, with a thin shot, he just hit a regular chip shot to a short pin on a downhill slope. And I think he put it as close as any of his flop shots. So it's just amazing. If you watch the slow-mo, watch what his hands are doing, watch how he approaches the club, watch how he holds it. You can see the down the line. I'm learning so much from these guys, and especially the slow-mo shots that we have them now, which is, uh, I think, really a, a, something you can really take heart when I did the slow-mo view mm -hmm. uh, on that uh, hybrid by the way that hybrid uh, I'm, I'm gonna steal that thing I think so <laughs> um, we do have a rule segment today it's not outside we're gonna do it here because I was surprised to find out that in 2019 they made some rule changes and one of the rule changes says you can touch the ball in the sand you can touch the sand in a bunker sorry you can touch the sand in a bunker Sometimes. When can you touch the sand in a bunker? So, so John, you're right. And, and this rule was changed back in 2019 uh, to allow a little bit more leniency when you are in the bunker. So, so just a little brief um, uh, recap of that. In the past, uh, you weren't even allowed to bring a rake into the bunker with you. Now, a lot of people might have brought a rake in you yep. know, to have it close by, but technically you weren't even allowed to do that. So now you're allowed to bring in a, a rake into the bunker. You're allowed to bring in another club into the bunker. And say if you're placing that rake on the ground and you accidentally touch the sand, uh, it is no longer a penalty if that happens. Uh, the other thing is um, after you've hit your shot, um, 
sometimes we don't always hit a great shot, maybe a little bit of frustration or anger, and then we hit down back into the sand. So that is no longer a penalty as well. So, okay. so it, these were all considered uh, in the past uh, testing the condition of right. the sand, right? right? So now they've taken away that penalty. Um, so you are now allowed to um, you know, place your clubs down in the sand. You're allowed to bring clubs in with you. Uh, when you dig your feet in, taking your stance, you're allowed to do that. Uh, you're still not allowed to place the club down into the sand before you hit your shot, right? right. So you still have to hover it above it. So there's just a little, some more considerations um, when you're in the bunker. Okay, the other thing that, that I, bothers me is sometimes there's rocks yes. and pine cones and leaves. Am I allowed to move those? You are. You are. So you are allowed to move loose impediments such as pebbles, such as leaves, maybe a, a, a wrapper or something would have flown into the bunker. So those are all, uh, you are allowed to move those as long as it doesn't move the golf ball. The golf ball. So you got to be okay. careful. Yeah. Okay. So that's good news. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, and, the, and again, you cannot improve your lie. You can't test the sand in any way. Mm -hmm. uh, I know sometimes some of those traps, uh, I have to use my club to support myself to get in because you know that's my right. yeah. my legs don't work the same anymore. That's allowed, and now. that is allowed that's now. That's right. Okay, that's right. so that's good news because yes. before it wasn't uh, wasn't uh, allowed. And, right. Uh, right. I felt sorry for some of the older folk that were trying mm -hmm. to get into these traps, mm -hmm. and especially the penalty areas. And you know they can't climb down in there, and then right. they were using a support. And well, now it's not a now it's not an issue at all. Oh, great. Yeah. So we're coming to the end of this year. Uh, November um, is going to be a, a, a month where we're transitioning. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a, a little teaser of what we're going to expect? We're going to talk more about it next week, but just give us a little teaser right now. I wonder, I wonder what you're referring to, John. <laughs> um, you know, I wonder what that might be. Uh, no, we're very excited to be, uh, once again, uh, reintroducing and, and launching our, our winter Golf Academy. Okay. Uh, our simulator bays will be up and running. Our plan is once the golf course uh, is put to bed, we are going to have both simulator bays uh, up and running in mid-November. So okay. probably the second or third week of November, uh, we'll be back at it. We're going to be launching all our winter programming very soon. Uh, our simulator leagues will be taking place again. They were very popular last year. Um, our, our lessons, our clinics, um, even our, our, junior, our junior winter camp, uh, spring camp, sorry, uh, that we want to launch for next year. So we have a lot of winter activities here at the club uh, for golf. We are now a 12-month golf facility, and we love it. And that's wonderful. That's really wonderful. Well, Tyler, thank you very much. Uh, uh, we'll certainly see everybody. Uh, hopefully a lot of you will come to the AGM, uh, uh, and we'll certainly see you next week. But until then, in this cold weather, <laughs> do the best you can. Please play well.